Checkout Tracking by the NPD Group brings you a receipt collecting system that gathers data anonymously through technology we created, providing your businesses with answers. Okay, so yeah, good afternoon. I'm happy to see so much faces for the last presentation today, and I'm coming up with like a super exciting topic, a nice topic, uh, which is like about HTML5. And um, yeah, um, I will talk about like latest trends, giving like an overview of what happened in the last couple of months, what's going to happen in, in the next uh, couple of months as well. And I will give an overview, okay, how you can use uh, HTML5 games um, to make more money as a publisher, for example. Um, I would like to start with a very short introduction about soft games uh, itself. So we are the world's largest HTML5 games platform. We are distributing games across like various channels all over the world. And um, we have now 325 games um, licensed, mostly exclusively, which I'm really proud of. And so, um, yeah, we work together with more than 600 developers releasing six games, oh, sorry, three games a week. And um, yeah, the games are available in more than 11 languages. Um, we now have like 80 million users um, on our platform, growing super fast. We're expecting to reach like the 20 million monthly active users um, within the end or, uh, or the end, at the end of this month or mid of next month, depending. And um, yeah, um, the users come mainly from tier one countries, so US, Canada, and uh, Western Europe. And um, yeah, I think the focus on HTML5 made this uh, success happen. Um, HTML5 is a very incredible technology, so I think a lot of people know it in this room. Um, it's changing the way how people, uh, users can consume um, games or content in general. Um, they can not only play it as an app that they have to download or install on their, uh, on their, on their device, they can play it basically everywhere, anytime they want. So they just open up, have to open their browser and they can play it on their mobile, on the tablet, on the desktop PC, they can play it on, even on smart TVs. Uh, which is great. Um, yeah, and the technology involved um, since 2012 a lot. So that's the year where we more or less officially started, or not uh, prepared to start actually. And so that was the games in 2012. You see super enhanced content, uh, what was back then. Uh, very simple games, um, very easy gameplay, um, not really sophisticated um, graphics. Then one year later, I just remember the time when I was super happy uh, to see the first pinball game which was available on the market. Um, pinball in general, it seems to be like a very easy game, but it's not that easy because it um, yeah, uh, requires um, some kind of um, yeah, power of the hardware and even of the browsers. Um, then one year later, I always said 2014 was the year where the first time or was the first time when HTML5 games can compete basically with apps, with native apps. Um, so one game, uh, Popping Pets, is it called? A um, lot of animations at the same time, um, really cool graphics, um, basically. But just just stands for like a couple of games, um, so like graphics get way, way more sophisticated than it was before, actually. And then 2015, our first 3D games are coming up. And um, right now, I mean, uh, in China, HTML5 is super, super big now. And um, I guess right now, or that's the that's year where HTML5 is basically ready to um, become like uh, going to the, uh, to the mass market, actually. Um, I've chosen also like a few games, which are, let's say, the top games across our platform. Um, the, the first one is like a 3D game, it's called um, Drag Race 3D. Um, super popular game on uh, the platform uh, for, for sure. Um, audience like men, boys, and like this. Classical racing game, you have to race against uh, the opponents, you have to upgrade your, uh, your car, you have to buy new cars, and all those kind of things. A um, lot of levels, um, people are coming back very, very often, and um, yeah, we see like really great rates um, uh, over here. Um, next one, a little bit more easy. Pins or BB is it called? Um, I'm mean, probably familiar with the with the gameplay over here. Looks really easy, uh, but because I think it's super easy, it's uh, super successful actually. So you can start right away, and you can start um, playing over here. Next one, Fly with Rope, also one of the top games. Um, um, it's like a one-touch control game with like I, I guess like a really great art style. Um, some kind of 3D graphics over there. You have to take care that this small um, guy uh, is coming from the start of the level uh, to the end of the level. So he's jumping from um, building to building, and you have to tap at the right moment uh, in order to get um, 
yeah, find the, the right way to next building actually. Um, okay, some some platform insights as well. Um, so, as you can see, like we do have like seventy percent, seventy five percent of the traffic is coming from mobile. Um, so mobile is super important for us, but also desktop is uh, still growing because we're working together with a lot of gaming companies who still have like desktop traffic. Um, the majority of people have, is really playing long time on on desktop, which is uh, surprising also for me. Um, but you know. The um, mobile devices are taking off uh, so far. Um, when it comes to uh, just one one picture is actually missing over here, showing like okay, what, what are the top categories uh, around here? Um, basically, um, top categories are like for female uh, audience, um, like dress up, uh, puzzle games, uh, arcade games, and for male, it's more or less um, uh, the arcade stuff and, and dressing games. So I would say nothing, nothing special, nothing un unusual over here. Um, that also shows a little bit what are coming next, actually. So right now, um, on HTML5, um, in, the, in the HTML5 ecosystem. Um, the casual games are very dominant right now, and um, uh, which is made, makes sense because like HTML5 was built for the mobile web, for the mobile browser, and um, the devices which have been released back in 2013-14, um, they had not not the capability to really drive like hardcore games actually. Um, but now like the games are getting more and more complex. That means like the game developers have had to spend more money uh, into, the, into the development. Also, publishers have to spend more money in order to um, get license or buy licenses for these kind of games. Um, so the next step will be actually pushing for it uh, very hardly. Obviously we see a lot of developers coming also from the um, from China or from other countries um, is freemium. Um, so what we have done in the uh, last couple of months is that we've released the, the first games with freemium mechanics uh, which is um, basically using a rewarded advertisement. Uh, we launched it with a few partners and we see like um, yeah great rates when we compare it to interstitials. Um, so people are really using it there um, they're happy to use it actually. So free to play is the next big trend for for HTML5, and as I said we are pushing it. And also, when you have a look to to China, basically um, there is like free to play the dominant um, way how developers can can earn money. So um, um, so we see, they like said, the big trend coming over to Europe and US finally, and then later on. Um, next way, <clears throat> but it's a little bit um, let's say on the long term, um, WebGL. That means like 3D games, which where we basically running in, in, inside the, the browser. Uh, why, in, why in the future? Um, because you know when you, um, you have an iPhone, for example, you cannot play WebGL games in your like, say, standard browser. You have to download like Chrome browser or Firefox browser. But in normal, in the normal cases, um, people just use the standard browser they have installed on their, on their device, actually. Um, so I believe you know as soon as WebGL is supported by standard browsers, um, especially on iPhone, it will be like a uh, will be really relevant uh, technology. But so far, um, it's not really uh, relevant. Let's say six months up to one year. Uh, this will be this will bring like a big boost to um, browser gaming uh, because the games are getting more and more complex even right? and can compete much even even more with um, Unity games um, on app side or on the desktop side actually. All right. Um, then the same coming to one of the main topics, um, which basically I found out when I was preparing the, the presentation, nobody was talking about. Um, one part is like, you know, how can publishers use HTML5 games in order to monetize their traffic? Um, normally, I was talking always, okay, how developers can 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 make money with HTML5 games? Why uh, HTML, uh, developers should use HTML5 games? But now I just want to show a little bit the, the other side, the publisher side, and why it's so important for uh, for them also to find out, okay, that. HTML5 games are a great way to monetize the user base. Um, Want to say the most um, common way how you can um, use HTML5 games to monetize the user base or engage them for longer time is that you embed them. Uh, that means you list them on your, um, let's say, a Kate site or you list them uh, within your app or whatever it is at the end of the day. Um, they are like different um, um, yeah, companies who are offering this kind of uh, business model. Um, normally it works like this. You get, an, get a link from a publisher or from a developer and you just uh, include it um, or you list your game on, on, on the portal and um, yeah, send them directly into the, to the right game. Um, business model over here is normally um, 
you know, when before the user is coming to the game, you see an advertisement, also in between the levels, and um, the publisher gets then a revenue share from the developer or the, the other guys who are doing this. Um, like some, some case study, um, so we're working together with, um, with Spill Games since a very, very long time. Uh, so like 2013, we, we signed the contract and since then we launched over 60 games with them, uh, which have been generated like more than 75 million um, game sessions over then. And as you can see how the games are integrated. So for example, on, uh, on here on game.com, Candy Rain, for example, or Candy Rain 2, um, these are the games which are listed on their, their portal. So as soon as the user clicks on these, one of these icons, they are just forwarded in to the games, uh, but the user um, doesn't feel that um, he's leaving um, the, the portals because everything is branded and um, he's just enjoying playing the game actually here. Um, the other way, uh, how you as a, let's say, app developer or like somebody who's dreaming of having its own app can, can work over here is um, a way that you basically wrap the content, the HTML5 games in an own app. Um, some developers allow that you can launch uh, single games as an app, uh, but most of the publishers or developers say, okay, hey, I don't want that you put my single games into the app store, uh, such as allowed to launch them as a collection, a game collection, as you can see. And I've just chosen one, um, one example, it's called Freetastic, it's an Android app, uh, one of our partners. He basically, um, um, just grabbing the whole game feed uh, from 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 our side, from our end, um, we built a very simple app, which is just wrapping the HTML5 games as a native app, and so the users can basically um, click on one icon again. Um, there's an interstitial coming, and then the user is, is playing the game, and everything is happening inside the app. So the user is not leaving the app; everything is happening inside the app. And again, the um, the business model is revenue share on the advertisement. So super Super simple for you, just have to promote your app. You can create your own 101 games app from um, North Korea, for example. I think fully brandable so the user doesn't feel anything. Um, the next way, it's called um, yeah, game recommendations or native ads, uh, which are well known also in the advertisement space. It's basically you will receive as a publisher um, a content box um, or like a widget where all the games are included, whatever you like. And um, the extra value for you is that the user or you get access to additional content. So if you do have, for example, a news app or if a general entertainment app and you um, don't want to uh, now license your own games or you're not a game developer, but you just want to create some, some further engagement for your users, you can basically include this kind of uh, widget and again, the user can play directly inside um, your app. Um, at the end of the day, why you should do this? Because the users stay longer inside your app. Um, they have, the, have a reason to come back into your app, and um, plus you can earn some additional revenue, which is um, like great. I also prepared some kind of demo version uh, for you, so you can understand, okay, how it looks like. Uh, not really. Sorry for that. So that's basically very, a very, very simple WordPress site. Yes. It wasn't in an app. It's in an app. But the example I show right now is for for um, for a website, but it works also inside an app. Yeah, but it works both actually. So this is like, like an example page just to to show how it works basically. Um, you see there are different different integrations examples, so different sizes, whatever. So it doesn't matter. Um, like the 300 to 250 widget, for example, or another one, and there are like special sizes, whatever. And I said, um, no, you can believe it can work also inside an app. The user clicks uh, on the icon. Um, the pre-roll is starting, and the user can basically play right away uh, this super game game. That's it, basically. Yeah, sorry, I'm not good in that. <laughs> okay, and he can close it again, and he's back on the on the original site. Yeah, so you you will not lose your users to an app store and another app. You will keep the users on your uh, website, and I think that's um, the main reason um, why yeah you should basically use oops um, this uh, kind of um, inside um, um, tool, for example. Um, also, a short course over here. So we're working together with like different news magazines all over the world. 
Uh, here's one example from, from a German news, uh, newspaper. So their goal was not to make more money, their goal was to create more page impressions. And hey, come on, with HTML5 games, it's super easy to create more page impressions. Um, the, let's say the challenge is to convince people to click on the, on the games. So we integrated here um, uh, within their newspaper, in their game section, actually. Uh, we saw like a 9% click-through rate on the widgets. So v, v, uh, CTR means like visible, when the widget was visible or this kind of tool was visible. And basically, through their other KPIs, they basically reached their goal. They generated like tons of more page impressions so that they can yeah, reach their um, monthly goal, let's say. Um, yeah. Okay, so the last one, how you can use HTML5 as well, uh, games as well, is especially for people who do have traffic from outside of the App Store. So if you have an app, but you have you know, included as well in the Amazon App Store or whatever is out there, you can send out push notifications to your users. And with these push notifications, you can promote other CPI tools, or you can promote your uh, some kind of HTML5 games. Um, how does it work? Users getting the push notification on this mobile, clicking on it, it will be installed, some kind of small icon on the desktop, user clicks on it, browser is starting again, and um, that's also the way how the user can find the way back to um, this kind of um, games here. And it works super super good because like, people are not just playing once, they're, playing, they're coming back more often because they like the game, they play the game, and they are um, um, yeah, really addicted, engaged to this. So you can also, um, you know, launch your own white label here or promote your own white label in order to make a little bit more money at the end of the day. Um, okay, that's let's say from from the overview side. So if you say, okay, that's super cool. Um, I mean, like I said, there are other companies also out there who are offering this. Um, if you say, okay, I want to try it out. We do have a game catalog where you can just access 300 games and start immediately your own um, gaming collection or app or whatever it is at the end of the day. You go there, you sign up, you get a, um, a, some kind of ID, um, choose the games, promote them, and that's it at the end of the day. Okay, that's it from my side. Um, thank you very much for your attention and I'm very happy to take your questions now. So tell me about... Um Worries about HTML5. Are there any sort of tools available to obfuscate the source code and resources to stop somebody sort of stealing a lot of the assets that are actually built into the games? Stealing is still a big issue, let's say. Um, and like basically, I mean, it's in it's in our interest that the games are being spread all over the world. Um, I mean, like the the problem starts when. Um, partners or whoever is, start, is starting to you know, um, exclude our um, advertisement API so that we are not earning money here. Like, um, there are some ways to obfuscate the code. Um, I'm just trying to think about it right now, but I'm, it's not coming into my mind. Um, but still, you know, if you invest a little bit of time into you know, uh, 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 trying to deobfuscate the code again, then you can do it. Um, but there is no 100% um, security out there, unfortunately. I think it's, ah, it's Scramble.js. That's, that's the tool we are using, actually. Can you tell me about um, quality assurance and device compatibility? Like, do you have guidelines for developers, or how can you guarantee for publishers that these games will work on their... Sure. I mean, like, um, we, we do have like, our, like an internal QA team. It's like five people who are sitting the whole day and testing on various devices. Um, I think what we have is like we have um, defined some kind of minimum device, um, which is like I think is an Samsung Galaxy 4 or 3, something like that, uh, which um, we say, okay, hey, this is the, the minimum device, and everything below, let's say, Galaxy Y or Galaxy S3, whatever. We do not care about it anymore, but all the others, let's say, everything what's coming afterwards uh, is covered, and um, basically that is that we are testing the games. If you find a bug, then uh, we take care about this um, as well, but in general, now it's in, in, in our um, interest that the games are working or running on as much devices and platforms as possible, actually. Does it, yeah. Um, do you find there's a, a different geographic distribution of HTL5 adoption above, above other devices, so it's more prevalent in certain countries or not, or is it pretty much mirroring the same technology adoption? But basically, it runs across the world, yeah, because we're using advertisement, and advertisement works everywhere. For sure, it's you know when you're like in let's say a company with Indian traffic only, uh, you might be sure, like aware that you cannot. I know monetize it uh, super good because ads are not super good paid in India. 
But if it's like tier one, tier two countries, then uh, you will have a lot of good fun, let's say. But basically, it works across the world, so it doesn't matter. Yeah. One last question for Alexander. I'm curious, do you find that there are certain kinds of games, or particular games that are more popular on just Sure, sure. Uh, if there are just particular games that are, end up being more popular on uh, PC or tablet versus uh, mobile phone because of the, just from the size constraints, like, I don't know if you've, if you've noticed that they're kind of generally about the same, or if there are certain games that work really, really well for, uh, for a phone, mm -hmm. and other games that work really, really well maybe on just PC or a larger, like, tablet display. Um, so basically, we, we, we are mobile first, so we always design the games that they work, or that they run on, on mobile um, the best way. Um, <clears throat> there for sure, I mean, I don't have exact numbers or an exact num uh, answer on this. Um, um, I know that some games, um, because they are designed for touch devices, are harder to play on desktop compared to mobile. But I said, you know, basically you, they, they run across all, all different platforms, actually. And um, yeah, come back to the original question. Something that is, I'm I'm not 100 sure uh, because I don't have the numbers in in, in my head. Uh, uh, may, may, maybe a different way to look at it is: Are there games that you don't make specifically because you you really you don't think that they will translate well or play or you know mm. be large enough to play well on a mobile device? Mm, basically, it's like this: that we I know. The games have to work, uh, you, the control have to work with the touch device. So if you have like some kind, uh, if the, we also got like the game submissions which only worked on, on PC, for example, yeah, because they, they used their, the cursors or um, the keyboard actually in order to, I know, navigate the, the, the figure into the, the game actually. Um, but I said, you know, basically the, the minimum requirement is that it works with touch devices or a touch control and um, that's it, so. Okay. Okay. Well, uh, we're perfectly on time. Thank you very much. Thanks as well. Thank you very much.